A joke for some, offensive to others. Coeur d'Alene police say these postcards are no laughing matter of what's being done to keep them out of your mailbox. And a Facebook post claims homeless shelters in our area are charging people to stay there. So a lot of you wanted to know, is that true? We set out to verify. I don't remember a time where I've had to turn any child away. And a local hairstylist taking the time to build relationships with her favorite clients. How it makes a difference for her and the families in tonight's Inland North Best. that nobody should be discriminated against or targeted. These offensive postcards hit mailboxes in North Idaho this week. They're mocking city leaders who condemned hate speech earlier this year in Coeur d'Alene. Local police aren't laughing, though. We begin tonight with Taylor Vido and the investigation now underway. The postcard is depicting a proclamation that was issued here at City Hall just a couple of months ago. Community leaders are condemning this postcard. They say it's really offensive. Meanwhile, Coeur d'Alene police say they're looking into this. I was concerned when I saw it. Um, I've never seen something like that created about me. Here's a look at the postcards that city leaders are condemning and calling racist. It depicts Coeur d'Alene Mayor Steve Widmeyer and two local civil rights activists as clowns. Below them, depictions of minorities, a homeless person, and a transgender person. Laura Tennyson is one of the people targeted. So it was kind of shocking and concerning when I first saw it. We coincidentally spoke with her earlier this week about Love Lives Here CDA, a local campaign aimed at stopping hate. In September, she stood alongside Mayor Widmeyer and a leader with the Kootenai County Task Force on Human Relations for this photo. Widmeyer had declared Coeur d'Alene as a welcoming community that condemns hate. Everybody deser deserves to be treated with kindness and with respect and with love. Now that same photo is being altered and mailed out through the Postal Service. It's not clear how many people received the postcards. Tennyson says she's aware of at least half a dozen. It's not clear who's behind them. But a Kootenai County artist posted this to Facebook, saying he had been commissioned to do the work. He declined to comment, but reached out to his client on her behalf. At this point, we're waiting to hear back. It's worth noting that similar postcards mocking a diversity program at Boise State were reportedly mailed out to lawmakers and state officials in July. The same artist was commissioned for those postcards as well. Meanwhile, Coeur d'Alene's police chief tells me they're investigating the local mailings. He says they're trying to figure out if this violates any laws or ordinances. The city attorney's office directed questions to police. Tennyson, meanwhile, says the offensive postcards show that people promoting hate in North Idaho are starting to feel pushback from the community. The hateful drawings appear to be their way of doubling down. They're being exposed and it's being, um, I guess the citizens of Coeur d'Alene are being informed about it and the community is now banding together against that kind of behavior. In Coeur d'Alene, Taylor Vido, Crim 2 News. A racist social media post is overshadowing an annual high school fundraiser in Oregon. A student posted that picture on Snapchat, and you can see seven teens dressed in all black with their faces painted black. A teacher at the school told the students to paint their faces so they could hide in the dark and then scare people going through the school's haunted barn maze. The student who posted the photo included the caption, hashtag N-word gang, with the N-word spelled out. Well, now school leaders and the student in the picture are under fire for what some are calling blackface. Yeah, one of the students has stayed home from school all week after getting dozens of death threats. So we want to know, what do you think? Who's at fault here? You can weigh in on the Vote Now tab on our Creme 2 mobile app. The Haunted Barn Maze is an annual fundraiser for the FFA. Students dress up in all sorts of costumes and try to scare people walking through, walking through that maze. Club leaders say there have always been, quote, night stalker types who dress in all black. So the students are now getting death threats, as we said, but they say the costumes are no different than they have in other years. Many believe the picture was innocent until the student added the racist hashtag and the school's principal agrees. Um, I think the, the language used in, in that is uh, completely offensive and uh, I, uh, I feel horrible for, uh, you know, uh, the, the vast majority that do not feel this way. If it's ever going to be at the expense of, uh, you know, a group of students uh, depicting them in a in a negative, derogatory fashion, it's it's not acceptable. The principal says black face paint will no longer be used at future events. He's also planning to meet with the student who posted that picture. She could be punished. It's not clear what her punishment, though, could be. We asked you what you thought, if that was appropriate or not, and 55% saying everyone involved is at fault for what occurred. It's an interesting time. Yeah, thank you for voting. 
Well, an air stagnation advisory right now in Spokane. It's in effect until Tuesday morning. There's also a separate advisory right now for North Idaho. That means we're going to see poor air quality for at least a few more days. So if you are sensitive to that, you might just want to stay indoors this weekend. And that might be okay because it's going to be pretty chilly still. Warmer it, than it has been, but cold. Mm -hmm. At least the sun will be shining. Yeah. Light right. winds, though. That's because we're not getting any mixing of the lower levels of the atmosphere. And if you thought October was cold, <laughs> you're right. It was record cold. Follow me over here. We'll show you this uh, record cold temperatures in October. The average high temperature was 51 degrees. We normally see a high temperature, average high temperature of about 58 degrees. This makes it the coldest October on record since 1905. And did I mention snowfall? Three and a half inches of snow falling during the month of October. Again, that's well above average. Well, we talked about that air stagnation advisory. It's everywhere across northern Idaho, all across eastern Washington, right up to the uh, east slopes of the Cascades. That's in effect through Tuesday morning. By the way, only EPA certified wood stoves or fireplace inserts are allowed to be burned uh, during this, uh, this advisory. Keep in mind, our air quality right now is moderate, and we hope to keep it moderate. Moderate. That's why we're trying to uh, limit the amount of burning that happens out there because there's just no mixing. All of the pollutants are just being trapped underneath an inversion, almost like a bowl placed over the basin of Spokane. So none of the, uh, the uh, bad air can get out. So we want to limit the amount of uh, burning we do. 26 degrees, that would be the overnight low. We'll look for a 48 for Saturday's high. Plenty of sunshine on tap. Let's look ahead to Sunday. Sunday, an overnight low of 29, then a daytime high of 50. We'll see a few more clouds on Sunday becoming partly cloudy. We'll have a look at your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Another Southern California wildfire is forcing thousands of people out of their homes. This one is burning in Ventura County. 7,000 people are under a mandatory evacuation notice right now. It's the Maria fire that is gaining momentum. Some neighbors, though, choosing to stay behind and protect their property. Just within the last 10 minutes or so, it got close enough to where we could actually hear it. You know, hear the crackling and the flames and everything, so it's getting a little bit closer, getting a little bit more nervous, but uh, still going to stick it out and see what happens. At least one building is on fire. Several others are threatened. Firefighters working to put it out were interrupted when a drone flew over the area. Obviously, that is extremely dangerous for everyone involved. If someone's flying a drone, then those firefighters and those pilots can't do their job. That could actually be the difference between a home being spared or burning to the ground. Washington State is not at fault for the 2013 bridge collapse over the Skagit River. The state's Supreme Court reached that decision just this week. A truck was carrying an oversized load that hit that overhead support beam, causing the bridge to collapse. No one was killed, although two vehicles did plunge into the water below. The state blamed the Canadian trucking company and vice versa. Court justices, though, ruled in favor of Washington, saying the driver is partially responsible. First Washington flu death of the year comes in Tri-Cities. Health leaders out of Benton County say a man in his 90s died after coming down with the virus. 31 people have died since the start of the 2019-2020 flu season, which began October 11th. Based on the CDC's weekly flu report, you can see activity start to pick up. Most states started in the green, which represents minimal activity, and now most states are seeing low activity, while Louisiana and Puerto Rico are in the red. Now, if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, there is still time. Doctors say November and December are usually the worst months of the flu season. So what if we told you you could get paid to deliberately get the flu? This is actually a legit research project happening right now. Yeah, researchers want to see how pre-existing antibodies impact a patient's flu symptoms after exposure to the virus, and they're willing to pay you $3,000. Hmm. Seems a little low. <laughs> 80 volunteers will be giving nasal spray with a strain of this year's flu and stay at the clinic for a week. Participants will be tracked for another 90 days. So if you happen to want to be one of those that takes part, you'll have to travel. The trial sites are in Maryland, North Carolina, Ohio, and Missouri. What do you think? Would you do it? I don't think I would. The yeah. flu is miserable. It is miserable. <laughs> okay, some breaking news just in the past few minutes. The attorney representing Spokane Police Officer Nathan Nash released a statement regarding current sexual assault allegations against the officer. That statement reads in part, Officer Nash categorically denies the allegation of sexual assault or any criminal activity. The allegation is false. Nash is being investigated for sexually assaulting a woman who was the victim of a domestic dispute that he was investigating. The Spokane Sheriff's Office is now looking into this case.